All right, everybody, this is Ross the Fig Boss. In today's video, we are talking about the best tasting fig varieties that you can grow at home. And not only can you grow them at home, by the way, but they're rather accessible. They're quite common now. Um, and the average person should have no problem uh, finding these particular varieties of figs. And so I think probably at this point, you guys are watching this video or maybe reading a blog post of mine on my blog here, figboss.com is what we're looking at. Um, and you're saying to yourself, all right, well, I want to grow a fig, but I really don't want to waste my time growing something that's not going to taste that good. I want to grow the best one, or I want to grow some of the ones that taste the best. Or maybe you guys want to have a really nice experience growing figs, right? Isn't this why we spend a bunch of money on a nice bottle of wine, right? We want to have that nice experience. We want to have, um, we're growing figs to have that amazing wow factor um, to really get you guys hooked. And I think if you guys eat any of the figs that I'm going to mention today, we're going to talk about a handful of different varieties that I've covered here on the blog. If you guys grow any of these varieties, you're in the right climate for that fig. The fig is well ripened and the weather has been decent at the time that you're picking it, it's going to taste so good that you're going to want to grow more fig trees. And so this is kind of, I would maybe you could say, like a gateway fig, right? They're a fig into other varieties. And if really, this will really spoil you, and I think um, just get you on that right path. So let's talk about some of the varieties now. Um Again, we'll talk a little bit about the climates, I think, that these figs uh, should be grown in because figs are highly subjective to the environment and the climate that they're grown in. So figs are very specific. And the variety as well, the genetics of every single variety determine the overall flavor. You know, um, it's just if, if I'm growing a different fig, like maybe you guys are used to brown turkey, or maybe Peter's honey as an example, these figs are just not very tasty. And it doesn't matter really where you grow them. There's always going to be a better fig that we're going to mention in this video that's just going to taste better across the board. I also want to mention, by the way, that the figs that we're talking about today are not just based on my own taste preferences. This is, I think, across the board what the majority of fig growers like myself who've been obsessed with figs for many years have tried hundreds of different varieties would probably agree with you got with me in what I'm about to say in this video and what I've already written here on the blog. There is just a handful of figs that are above and beyond the others. And thankfully now, because they're so tasty, they're rather common. You can find them very easily. So let's kind of get into it. Here is actually the, the, the post that I made here, and we'll talk about some of the varieties. First up is Black Madeira. Then we're going to talk about the Col de Doms. Then we're going to talk about Smith. We're going to talk about Hivernenka. We're going to talk about Hatib de Argentil. We're going to talk about Paradiso, the Adriatic figs. And so that's a good seven or eight different varieties there. Before we get into that really quickly, I want to just talk about fig flavor. And so on the blog here, I've also talked about the flavor profiles. What does a fig really taste like? And so there's really four basic components of fig flavor. I think they all have somewhat of a dried fruit flavor, like dates, raisins, dried figs. A lot of them have a melon flavor when they're kind of underripe. And they also can retain that as they ripen, depending on the variety. There's also a sugar flavor. Every fig has its own unique nectar uh, with different textures. We're going to also talk about texture, by the way, not just the flavor of these particular fruits. But the sugar can come in the form of its own nectar. And the nectars can be in different thickness, and they can also be in different flavors. So you can have a nectar that tastes like honey. Some of the nectars taste like caramel, cotton candy, agave honey, all different types of wild sugar flavors. And then, of course, if you're lucky and you have a really good fig, typically those are the ones that are going to have a berry flavor. And these are going to be rather more complex. And I think most fig growers who have grown even just more than a handful, 10, 20 different varieties would agree that the berry favor flavored figs, and not everybody agrees with this, but typically the berry flavored figs are a bit more complex. And so they have more complexity, more notes to them. And that's what people like. I love berries. In fact, in every July, every June, 
um, here in the Philadelphia area, I harvest about 10 to 15 different berries at any given time um, during that period of time of my season. And so I'm eating handfuls of berries. And I've tried many different types. And you can see here in this photo, I mean, things like gooseberries, raspberries, strawberries, alpine strawberries, different colored raspberries, honeyberries, currants, um, gooseberries, josta berries, kiwi berries, blueberries, um, mulberries. The list goes on and on and on. And so figs have this amazing ability to have a berry flavor, especially when they're a bit more complex and also when they're caprified. Uh, to have a really nice berry flavor that resembles some of these other fruits. In fact, you can have a fig that tastes like a cherry more than a cherry does. I mean, it's pretty amazing how some of the figs that you can grow, especially when grown in the right climate, choosing the right variety and pollinating them, can produce some really incredible flavor profiles. Um, I mean, the figs, the genetic diversity in figs is amazing. And so the three main types of figs, are, I think, are sugar figs, honey figs, and berry figs. And so that's what we're really going to focus on today is the berry figs because the honey figs and the sugar figs, although I think they're quite good and I grow plenty of them, um, I enjoy them, they're not as complex and they're not as interesting typically as the berry figs. And so that's, I think, what the average fig grower's preference is. Uh, that is serious about growing figs. And so that's what we're going to focus on. First, let's talk about Black Madeira. I think Black Madeira is quite a late fig. Um, it's also a bit finicky. It can be very productive. Um, it also can grow rather well. In fact, my in-ground tree grows super well and produces rather well. Uh, but the problem with it is, for many of us, it's just rather late. And so if you don't have a long enough season, uh, if we don't live somewhere in the south, it can be rather difficult, or even, let's say, in California, in a really warm place where the temperatures are consistently in the 90s for a lot of the summer, it's going to be difficult to grow this particular fig and get it to fruit at the right time. And so if we can get this this particular variety to fruit in a dry climate, um, temperatures in the 90s or even in the low hundreds, and it's really dry as well, there's very few better tasting figs. In fact, I think most hobbyists, most people would agree that Black Madeira is really just that fig. It really is that notorious fig that I think if you polled every fig grower and asked them what is their favorite fig, this would be it because it has a very, very intense and complex flavor to it. And the berry flavor is rather interesting. It's also very sweet. Um, it has a very intense honey sweetness, and the berry flavor, again, is complex like raspberries, other berries. It's just on another level that when you taste it, you'll know. I mean, there's really not that much, I think, um, that kind of I can explain without you really just experiencing it for yourself. One of my favorites, because Black Madeira, although is very popular and commonly found now, um, it actually has plenty of names, by the way. So let me talk about some of the other names. There's a fig called Figo Preto. Um, we also have a fig that's called uh, Pota de Caval, Violetta, Madeira Island Black. Uh, there's a number of synonyms for it, and so it's really all the same fig. There's also a similar fig called Italian 258 I've talked a lot about here on the channel that also goes by the name of Genovese Nero. And so that's very similar. And I actually like Italian 258 slightly more in my climate because it does seem to ripen about two weeks earlier than Black Madeira can. Um, not to say that they're both um, early by any means. They're certainly going to ripen later in the season. And so regardless, I think most people, unless you have a lot of sunlight and a lot of heat in your yard, growing them in the north is going to be a bit difficult. You can also give them a head start. But I do like Italian 258 a bit more because it does ripen a little bit earlier, it seems. It's a little bit less finicky. Um, and it also uh, will taste a little bit better in the fall weather when it's a bit cooler. Um, and so that's a critical piece of information right there for people like myself. Uh, we also have another fig that's similar called Bordesot Noir. Bordesot Noir is a commercial fig that is super similar to these types and you got to wonder why i mean actually you don't really have to wonder why because 
it's so tasty. Um, even Black Madeira is even a nice commercial fig in its own right. Um, but a fig like Borgia Sot Noir transplants or tra- um, transports really well, handles very well, has a longer shelf life. Um, it also typically has a closed eye, doesn't split that often, um, handles a bit of rainier, more humid conditions better than Black Madeira. And so there's a lot of options here. My favorite, though, in this category is the Calderona. This one was made popular by Montserrat Pons in Spain. He's written a book, and he's cataloged a huge number of varieties from Spain and houses them in Mallorca. It's um, a really nice variety that I find uh, just performs a little bit better in my cooler weather. Um, But across the board, even things like Colonel Littman's Black, Black Cross, Raven de Calci, these all relatively taste the same, and you're going to get the same experience from them um, if you can ripen them perfectly, as I mentioned. Um, the way that Black Madeira has kind of cropped up, a little bit of history on it, is that it was originally introduced by the USDA, and the USDA has imported a number of varieties from all over the place, I guess, um, and houses them here in California at UC Davis. Um, They maintain them. They make sure they're surviving. uh, They're not dying. They're keeping the genetics alive. And back in the day, about, you know, over 10 years ago, there was a community of fig growers on a website called Figs for Fun. This was really the first community of fig growers like myself who have really cared a lot about these different fig varieties. And so the, the community is back then really good about trying all the different varieties in the USDA's collection. In fact, the USDA at the time was allowing people to access figs in their collection. I think you still can now, but you have to be a registered uh, nursery. But they were opening it up to the public, I believe, um, to actually just order fig cuttings of any variety you wanted. And so a lot of people tried all these different figs and came to the conclusion after really eating and trying most of the figs in the USDA's collection that Black Madeira really was the best tasting. And so from there, it just became very popular. A lot of hobbyist growers loved it. It continued on. More and more people tried it. More and more people loved it. And so the the rest is kind of history. You know, it's been over 10 years now since this fig has been of uh, great prominence. It's weird that... This one in particular, this name has risen into these this history. Like it's, if there was ever a book of a history book written on figs, this one has to just be mentioned in the United States anyway. Um, and so it's weird that this one has been chosen for whatever reason in terms of the name, because there's many names for it. Uh, but again, it really is the one that comes from the USDA and kind of where it all started and how it became so popular. Um, So it's survived hundreds of years. It's been around for a long time. It goes by different names in different countries. And so, again, it it just is notorious. It it, it is, by many people's regards, the best tasting. Now, there is another fig, by the way, that actually I would argue, and this is my own personal preference, is better overall— a better overall eating experience than the than Black Madeira. And that could be just where I live. I might change my mind if I live somewhere really warm. Um, but the Col de Damas, which are a, f- a series of figs that originated in Spain, um, these really are, I would consider them the queen of figs. If Black Madeira is the king, which it's been named the king, by the way. I have not really named it. I don't think I've named it the king. I think most people would call it the king of figs. The Col de Nama is the queen because it means a lady's neck. And actually, it's also been called and referred to as the queen of figs. And so it has a long and distinctive neck. That's kind of how you can do um, identify it. But what I love about it is actually the, not only is the flavor complex, It I wouldn't say it's as tasty or as complex as the flavor of a black Madeira, but the texture is amazing. And the texture is very different than the majority of figs. Um, I would say black Madeira 
can be very jammy, like eating, you know, kind of really eating jam out of a jar uh, that you might buy at the store. It can also be rather meaty, depending on how you pick it. So it can resemble meat, believe it or not. But the cold knobs is kind of like a pastry. You're eating a fig cake. You're eating something along the lines of like a, a pancake batter. Like it's so thick and so different that the thickness really is like a pastry. Like I really do. I think you're eating fig cake. And so every time I eat them, I, I'm just amazed. And I've been trying to find other figs with a similar thickness, a similar pasty or pastry-like texture. And it's just hard to find. There are some others, but undoubtedly, this is the quintessential fig for texture. And so if you're trying to grow the best tasting fig, you really should try to grow this one as well. Um, it's also rather late, but I would argue probably not as late or maybe along the same lines as a black Madeira. So again, it's going to be a bit more difficult to grow. Uh, but the nice thing about the cold Adamas is that they have a better ability to handle rain and humid conditions where black Madeira does not. Um, so I would highly recommend this if you're really interested in growing one of these for a more humid place. Again, you need a bit of a longer season. Um, in general, they are amazing figs, and they come in different names as well. Um, so let's talk about that. Um, the Col de Dom, uh, the Col de Doms that you might find usually come in a fig called Blanc, Noir, or Grease. And depending on the, the name, just determines the skin color. Again, this is in a different language. Uh, and so Blanc, Noir, and Grease... Um, is just meaning the color of the skin. So Col de Nam Blanc is yellow or green on the outside. Noir is a, uh, a black fig. And then Grease is a gray colored or sort of red colored uh, fig. And so the pulp is really what matters when it, when it comes to the flavor. The skin obviously can have a different um, flavor profile from one fig to the next. But the skin is rather the same on these. And, and so even though there are three different colored skins, they're basically the same tasting fig. And so that's rather weird. It's not usually the case. It's amazing how this has even happened. I, I'm always I'm very curious to know because this is not really commonly found in figs. And, and so just in general, if you find yourself a Blanc, a Noir, and a Grease, and you're trying to find one that's healthy, you're going to be very happy. Either one, any of those is going to fun, is going to have that amazing texture, that amazing eating experience. There are other ones that you may come across, like Gigantina is basically just a, a larger Blanc. Uh, there's also the Col de Dame Mutante, uh, which is a mutation of Noir. And there's also Col de Dame Roja, which is just basically Col de Dame Noir with a different name. And so a lot of these can be very similar, um, if not the same. But if you have a trained eye, you will notice some different observable characteristics uh, with the fruits and the tree itself. But in general, you will get that same thickness, that same amazing eating experience that you're looking for. Um, they are rather finicky trees, uh, sometimes rather unhealthy, depending on the source. And so I've planted mine in the ground and I've rejuvenation pruned them over time and they've become very, very healthy trees. And so I'm now quickly on my way to having some really nice mature trees, not only in containers, but also in the ground that are very healthy. Um, one of the alternatives though, that I try to find of something that was a bit better than the cold Adams, because I'm always looking for something better than the cold Adams in particular. I think it's, it's hard to find a, a black Madeira that's going to perform well here. I don't, you know, disagree though. I think I should be on the same mission that I am with the cold Adams, but the cold Adams typically will perform better here in general because of the shape, because of the rain and split resistance, because of its better skin. And so one of the figs I found or came across is called De La Roca. Again, this is another Pons fig. So again, oddly enough, Pons, in my opinion, has a better fig in Calderona than Black Madeira, and also has a better Col de Dom in the form of De La Roca. And so De La Roca to this day is still, I think, the best eating experience I've had in a fig. It's incredible. Uh, 
it it te- typically tends to handle the humidity even better than the cold anoms and seems to dry better and easier and has a shorter hang time and so i would recommend it again for people in more humid places although any of these would do really well um, there are other figs out there similar to these called Sarda, Col de Frar, La Bourgeoisie. And so depending on where you guys live, you may want to choose a different one. Um, they're all going to relatively give you a similar experience. The next one is Smith. And so I like to think of Smith. This is, I guess, my own <laughs> take on this is that Smith is kind of like the prince. So if Black Bedeer is the king, the cold anoms of the queen smith is the prince and the reason for that is because they're kind of like smith's kind of like a baby of the two you're combining the nice cakey pasty pastry texture of the cold anoms with a really nice flavor although not that the cold anoms doesn't have a nice flavor but you're getting a, a a very complex flavor there sort of like the black madeira fig in smith and so there's a really nice berry flavor, and it's kind of a nice compromise of the two. Um, the nice thing about Smith is it performs really well in shorter season climates, more mild places, and it also performs well in very humid places. You do need a little bit more sunlight, and so there is a little bit of a caveat there, but it is incredible. Uh, for anybody in the south, for anybody in the northeast, for anybody even in the Pacific Northwest, as long as you can give it enough sunlight, it is very, very good and well worth growing. Also very reliable. And so there are other figs I think are very similar. Again, um, there's Texas BA1, which in my mind is just a slightly hardier Smith. To, um, Smith is notorious for not being very hardy. And so I find that Texas BA1 gives you a very similar eating experience but is hardy to at least 10 degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, actually, it, my tree has gone down to six, six degrees Fahrenheit. And so it's survived multiple winters now unprotected in the Philadelphia area. Um, we also have other figs that are not exactly similar. Uh, well, Sesak is similar for sure. So that's an alternative. But there are other figs like Borgesote Noir, I'm sorry. Actually, it should be Borgesote Grease, not Borgesote Noir. There is a typo there. But Violet Sapor and Socorro Black, these are all very similar figs to each other that I find have a very similar flavor profile and eating experience to, to Smith. Um, I also find that Azores Dark somewhat tastes like Smith, which is pretty incredible because that's just a hearty Chicago. Um, so... You can find a similar eating experience in other forms, and maybe if you live in a different place, you may want to grow a different one. That's why I'm giving you guys these alternatives. Borja Sot Noir, I know, does really well in warm and dry places where you can caprify it. Um, and so that's, that's really Smith in a nutshell there. It comes from uh, originally Croatia, we believe, and so the Becknell family... Uh, somehow got it in France and then took it from France to the United States and sold it really in the South um, through their commercial nursery and sold it all over the South. And so it's rather popular in the South for that reason. Uh, we also have the Cold Anoms. I didn't mention the origin, but it's really just a, a commercial fig in, in Spain. It, there's not really much else to it. I don't know exactly where it comes from don't know much of the history beyond that. Um, the Hibernenka figs. These are a f- class of figs that are not yet that popular in the United States. And I find they will become very popular. It's inevitable because of how tasty they are. They're incredibly good on the level of Black Madeira. In fact, I would even argue they're even tastier than a Black Madeira um, and those class of figs. They have many different names and most of which come from Europe and Spain in particular, where the Hibernenka is very popular in Spain. And again, this is described by Montserrat Pons in his book. And so there's a number of varieties that you can find kind of that even Pons mentions of Mora de Bou, Hibernenka, um, Coldadam Catat, Burgundia, 
And there are others that have been found by a French grower. One's called La Ritja, Oriola. And so one of my favorites in particular is called De La Senora Hibernenka that was introduced by ponds and is housed uh, by ponds in Mallorca. I also have really high hopes for the Coldadam Katat. Um, because both of them seem to probably do better in rainier conditions than others. Now, what's nice about these is that even though they ripen rather late, and that's really the big downfall to this fig, like the cold or like the cold adams and black Madeira, the hibernica is even later, I imagine, maybe even two weeks later. Um, so it's difficult to grow this in mild places, but if you can get a long enough season and it will ripen in your fall weather, it's going to actually perform rather well in your fall weather because it's really good with the rain. And it's also really good with a shorter hang time. It just seems to ripen better quality figs, even in really cold weather. And so it's actually a commercial fig in Spain. And it just has all the check marks, all the boxes checked that you would want. It's a super high quality flavored fig. Um, it's jammy. I don't think it's pasty or cakey. It is similar, a similar experience to a black Madeira, but in a different form, and in my opinion, is uh, is better. And so the the De La Senora Hivernanka has a short hang time, and for me, that's what I really, really love about it. The next one here is a fig that I don't think really gets a whole lot of attention either. Um, <clears throat> there's a lot of figs that I think taste great and we could probably do a huge and very long video, although this one here, we're almost approaching 30 minutes is, you know, it, we're talking about some really good ones, but I think there are some other ones out there. I could go on and on and on forever about some of these figs. There's definitely a lot of figs that are very good. And I just think I have to mention this fig because it's, it doesn't get enough credit. It, <clears throat> it especially here and in cooler climates, more mild climates, in less sunny climates, this is going to give you a really good eating experience. And so it, it, it does come from the USDA. We don't exactly know where it comes from beyond that, believe it or not. It has a French name. You would imagine it comes from France somewhere. But what I like about this is that it does have a jammier profile, a little bit cakey, like the Smith, like the Cold Adams. Um, but the berry flavor is a little bit stronger than Smith, and it has a more of a cherry-like flavor. Um, the hang time is a little bit longer than Smith, but the, the tree just in general produces in even the worst conditions. It has good rain resistance. It's great for humid places. And so in general, it's just a fantastic choice for people in less ideal climates like Smith would be. Uh, but again, different characteristics, different flavor profile, and more acidic, more fruity, more fruit forward in this particular fig that the berry flavor definitely tends to wow you a bit more like the De La Senora Hibernanca and like the, the Black Madeira, but very different than those so here's some other photos i have here of the hatib the argentil here's some more of smith by the way i'm not sure if we really you guys got to see this but go to the blog you'll see the blog post and you can look at all of this in your own your own leisure here um the next ones uh, that i want to talk about are the paradiso figs and so the paradiso is a fig that originally was found in Italy. Um, it means paradise. It's a, a fig that was described in Galicio's drawings. So Galicio is a person who traveled throughout Italy many years ago and put together a manuscript. Along his journey, he would document and draw different varieties of fruit, not just figs. Um, and he would write about them. And so it was really important. It was a big part of Italian culture, what he did. And so a lot of the figs that he described are found and documented well and still to this day present. And one of the figs there uh, that he documented in his manuscript is called Paradiso. And Paradiso um, 
unfortunately, we don't really know, I think, the true Paradiso that is in his his manuscript. But we found, I think, a pretty good representation. But a lot of growers along the way just took it upon themselves in very weird fashion, I guess, to name their fig Paradiso. I don't know why. I don't know exactly what their thought process was. Maybe they just thought it was paradise. And so there's many different sources of Paradiso, and they're not all the same. In fact, they're, they can be quite different uh, than each other, one of which is the Paradiso from Bode, a um, fig that I think is extremely good. Um, this is definitely among the best-tasting figs and should be grown in more people's uh, collections. It has a really dense and thick texture, like the Col de Dames, and also has a little bit more of a milder flavor, but certainly um, the berry flavor is quite strong. Um, and my mind is a different experience than a Col de Dom, but on a similar level of the Col de Doms. So it, it just, in my mind, is seriously, to this day, some of the best tasting figs I've eaten but they're very difficult to grow in somewhere that isn't dry. Uh, it is a bit late to ripen as well. Um, so probably around the same time, unfortunately, as a Black Madeira and a Col de Dom. But this is a nice little alternative that I think is absurdly good. It's exquisite. Um, and so it needs to be recognized, I think. The other Paradiso is the Paradiso I have from Ciro. Ciro is a commercial grower in uh, in Italy. Bode is a well-known commercial nurseryman in France. And so he's amassed a number of varieties and tried a number of varieties and has spread around really good tasting varieties and well-performing varieties in France, That most of which are in the United States, by the way. Um, Ciro is a commercial grower in Italy. He's a super great guy, by the way. And... He has a, a Paradiso that um, he grows and sells the figs from in Italy um, that, in my mind, are also very, very good. Uh, I think this is more along the lines of the Paradiso that is grown or shown in Galicio's drawings. And so this Paradiso actually ripens rather early. Um it also uh, has a rather different flavor and in my mind is kind of unlike most figs. There are maybe, <clears throat> you could maybe place this, Not, I would not put it in a, I don't think it's similar in that it's the same type, but I think the Adriatic figs, which we're going to talk about next, is more similar to this than probably any other fig that I can think of. Um, although I would not place it, I would not call it an Adriatic. The texture is different and more a bit pastier, uh, like a pastry, and a little bit more mild. So along the lines of a Col de Dom rather than a Adriatic or a Black Madeira. The Adriatics are next. And so the Adriatic figs are basically just a, a type of fig that is very similar to the white Adriatic fig that was grown in California many years ago. This was one of the first commercial figs grown in the United States. We had to import, by the way, all the varieties that we have because none of them are native to North America. And so Adriatic is really one of the best that came over. And was spread all over and because it was spread all over it has many many names for the same fig and so we've talked a lot about some of the other names for these figs um and this one has probably more names than any of the others that we've mentioned so far there's probably at least 20 to 30 different names for this fig it's crazy they all have by the way probably very similar genetics if not the same genetics but because of epigenetics They've adapted to their location, they've changed, and they have different observable characteristics, kind of like the figs in, in the Hivernenka category that I mentioned here. Um, and so there's a lot of names for this fig, and it's very good. And if it doesn't resemble the white Adriatic, it doesn't belong really in this category. It doesn't mean the Adriatics doesn't mean that it has a green skin and red interior, although that is obviously the colors that this fig presents. 
But you can see there's a clear difference between this, especially the shape, the color of the pulp, the, you know, pattern of the pulp, and between this. It's just a very different fig, a very different eating experience. And although the Paradisos are green-skinned, red interior, they're entirely different figs with entirely different characteristics. And so these in general, though, are are very, very good as well as the, the Paradisos. And again, I do think that you can maybe draw some similarities there in terms of the eating experience. Um, I think, though, the Adriatics, though, are more along the lines of a Black Madeira, kind of like a Black Madeira light almost, a little bit less complexity, a little bit less intensity, um, but still rather intense, uh, more intense than here, at least, most of the Col de Doms, um, more intense than maybe even Smith and some of the others. It has a very strong berry flavor. And that's really what it has going for it. It's jammy on the inside, a above average texture as well. Uh, but it's great because this fig can be grown in a lot of places. It's very hardy. It's reliable. It's not too late, but it is late. It's somewhere in between mid-season and late season. So in between Smith and Black Madeira. And maybe you could, I don't know, um, say that it's maybe even like somewhat like a Black Madeira, but also somewhat like a Smith and somewhere maybe in between. The nice thing about the Adriatics guys is that they have a really good ability to taste good in the fall, just like the Hibernencas. The Hibernencas, they ripen quickly. The Adriatics taste good even when they're underripe. And so I would recommend them for most people, even in more mild places or shorter season places, because they can still contend very well even late in the season. Um, and it would almost seem like they do ripen at the right time because they're gonna they're just gonna be at a higher quality even in the colder weather. Uh, these to me typically have like a really strong strawberry or raspberry flavor. And they really do taste like strawberry. And so one of the names is strawberry verte or even strawberry. Um and so, yeah, you'll see these figs. Um, one of the easiest ways to know is it just has a very strong strawberry flavor. Um, and then, oh, I think that's it. That's the last one. But I will, I do want to mention some others that are really good. And, and there's a long list of these figs here, guys, that I honestly could go through, again, a long talk about all the different varieties, but some of the other ones that people really like are things like Joali Noir. That's one of my favorites. Feather River, Angelito, uh, Vertolino is definitely one of the best tasting figs that ripens rather early. Uh, also Castle Tresino is really, really good. Uh, Del San Juan Verde Paso, Cavalier, Parajal, Martinenka, Bordesot, Sefeno Preto, and Lampira One. Uh, again, there's so many others, I think, as well, that just were not really mentioned. But again, I think um, this is a great starting point, especially because these varieties are so common. They're standards. Everybody loves them. Undoubtedly, they taste the best. And this is like fig history. This is like the basics of figs. So if you can grow these and understand these, taste them, get a handle of them, you can get a really good idea of what figs have to offer in terms of flavor, uh, in terms of texture. And so this is, I think, me at this point signing off. Check out the blog here, guys, figboss.com. We got so much information there. Uh, it's well worth looking at. We also probably at this point have fig cuttings for sale or fig trees for sale. We have fig cuttings, I think, for sale at this point. All that's down in the description. We will see you guys soon. Take care. Check out the next uh, video. We'll see you soon.